Hello and welcome to your first video of your chemistry course. In this video, we will give a brief introduction to chemistry. While talking about the periodic table of elements, you have probably, most of you or all of you, have probably heard of the periodic table of elements. In this video, we will focus on how it is structured, how we can work with it, and throughout this whole course, which each chapter and each lesson, we will just add to the knowledge of the periodic table of elements, and in the end, you will be masters of working with the periodic table of elements. First of all, this is the periodic table of elements. It is also provided below the video for you to download, so you can use it throughout, uh, throughout this course. First of all, I want to emphasize that we are focusing on the main important parts and we will kick out all of these lousy elements below. So these then are all the elements that we will be working with. How the periodic table of element is structured, this was a question for a long time and there have been a lot of different things proposed, a lot of different ways how to show all these elements, how to put them together, but this is the constant since around 1913, so this is um, how you will find the periodic table of elements everywhere. And you can appreciate right here with the big hydrogen that for each element that we know there is a card and on this card there are specific facts about this element. For example you have the atomic number which is probably the most important number here in regards to organization of the periodic table of elements. As you can see over here our hydrogen has the atomic number of one and what you can quickly appreciate is that from left to right we read it in those rows we have the atomic number of one for hydrogen Hydrogen. Then we go all the way to the right because there are no elements here and we have helium with the two. Then we start from the left just reading it like a book. We have lithium with the three, beryllium with the four, boron with the five, carbon with the six, nitrogen with the seven. You get the gist and this will continue until down here with 118 of atomic number. So this is a rule that we can follow by. From left to right, just like a book, the atomic number will increase by one. The atomic number will also give you some more information that we will encounter in the next videos. But for now, it's just important that the atomic number is a key point for the organization of this table. On the other side, we have the atomic weight. The atomic weight is not so much perfect for actually having a rule, and it tends to also increase from left to right, but there are some examples. For example, over here we have argon with the atomic weight of 40 and potassium with 39. So here the rule would actually be broken. Therefore, we, uh, we don't say that there's a rule since there is no rule, but usually it would tend to increase also from left to right, just like reading a book. Then also every element has its name. It's hydrogen, for example, and there is the element symbol. It is also important to say that the element symbol does not always have, a, have to be the first um, letter of the name of the element. So there can be some misnomers. Now the periodic table of elements is also then structured in groups and periods. We have the groups right here and in columns we go down. So these, these yellow borders that you see, those are the groups. So from hydrogen to francium down here, that's a group. From beryllium to radium and so on and so forth. Here from helium to um, organesson down here, these are all um, groups. And from left to right, we have our periods. So from cesium right here to radon, this would be a period. From potassium to krypton as well, those are periods. So why are we grouping these elements to some specific groups? Because we have seen that these elements in specific groups, so in the columns, over and below each other have some similar properties. For example, here we have the alkali metals. It's important to say hydrogen doesn't belong to alkali metals. This is also um, an exclusion of the rule. So lithium and everything below is considered as being alkali metals. And we say it's group one. It's the first column. And we say that they are usually highly reactive, especially when in contact with water. You know, there are some crazy reactions. If you give sodium to water, there are basically explosions. So it's highly reactive. We have low melting points and also low boiling points. And when we are forming ions, we will see that in the later videos, they also have the formal charge of plus one. The second group, as you can see here, one row to the right, that's group two. Those are the alkaline earth metals. They are 
a bit less reactive than the alkali metals. You will see by the rule of the progression of the group that that, that all will also extend. And they are harder and denser than group 1 metals. And then, since they're group 2, in the form of ions, as you will later see, they will be having the ch formal charge of plus 2. Combined for group 3 to group 12, we can say that they are good conductors of heat and electricity, and they have quite high melting points. For the group 17 over here, those are the halogens. They are highly reactive nonmetals, and when forming an ion, they have the formal charge of a negative one, and they can exist in different states. We will also learn about states in the next videos, states like gaseous state, liquid state, or also solid state. And then over here we have the group 18, the noble gases. They are very stable due to a thing they have called the full electron shells, fulfilling the octet rule. They are colorless, odorless gases and have quite low boiling points. Also what I want to mention is that these groups right here, like uh, from boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, all these groups, they are very diverse in their properties, so um, we won't focus on their properties as groups specifically. So this was all about groups now, where we divide them in columns. We can also now divide them in rows. So we have seven periods, as you can see. We have hydrogen to francium, and these are seven periods, seven elements stacked on top of each other. And now these periods are read from left to right. So for example, potassium, calcium, scandium, they would all be in one period over here, actually in the th fourth period. So these periods actually tell us something about the number of electron shells. The number of electron shells are just the paths the electrons can take around the core of the element, about the nucleus of the element where the electrons can flow. And this will also be a topic, a very important topic for the next videos. But we can say and quickly mention that in the first uh, first period over here we basically have one shell and in the seventh period we basically have seven shells but more on that in later videos also there are other things that tend to uh, develop in the periods from left to right we also have the increase of atomic number as we just said we are just reading the atomic number like a book hydrogen starting with one helium with two and so on and so forth also, the atomic radius decreases and the electronegativity increases. Um, that's because there are just stronger attractions between electrons and protons within our at atoms, as you will see later. Atoms are and elements are all about electrons, protons and neutrons. And there are just bigger attractions from left to right between them. So they get, tend to get smaller because they attract them each other even more. Now I also need to warn you about some false false friends. If you're a native German speaker, you can have some problems and you should memorize these. For example, we have hydrogen, where the symbol is this H, in German Wasserstoff. Then you also have nitrogen with the symbol N, which is Stickstoff. Then you have oxygen with the O, which is Sauerstoff. Then you have carbon with the C, which is Kohlenstoff. Then you have sulfur, which is S, which, which is Schwefel. Potassium. One of the worst things that a lot of people have problems with in the beginning would be potassium, SK for kalium, lead, PB, lead, PB for Blei, tin, SN for tin, and mercury, HG for quicksilver. There are more of these false friends out there, and I just want you to keep an open mind to not get tricked. Now let's quickly summarize. Uh, all that we learned about the periodic table. The periodic table is structured into groups, and those are the columns from top to bottom. And then we have periods, those are the rows from left to right. Groups share similar chemical properties due to the same number of valence electrons, more to that later. Periods indicate the number of electron shells all those elements have. And there are common false friends that exist between English and German element names, so watch out for them. Thank you very much.